Ah. Um, which With means this on the, computer, the table. Because then we'll be looking down and people will be looking at the tops of our heads. Morning, everybody. How are you? It's Hello. the usual argument about the placement of the camera. Mark's, for some reason, trying to look taller every day. Hang on a minute. Better. Nadia's lost an inch and a half of height. And she's trying to dispute So worried. This. I've got to go and have a Dax. A Dax. You keep saying Dax. What is Dax? It, it's, it's a bone scan. Because if I'm... I don't believe him. I think he measured me wrongly. But oh, my if Lord. I am an inch and a half less than I was, then I'm crumbling. God, these glasses are a bit... They are so fucking I look awful. like super... Not super... Where have you got them from? I just found them, Mark, in, the I found them in the corner of my room. They're cheap and cheerful. You've got used to my, you've got used to oh, my... Oh, they work well. Oh. Who's the they? As I said, they're cheap and cheerful. I got them from good lookers. You the bought way. them? Mark, they're for women. No, they're not. They're in the men's... Anyway, I don't I like, I don't like that coloured glass look on you. It's very, um, it's a bit Janet Street Porter. It is. Now then! Sorry, I don't... Care. Shut up! Shut up! Anyway. Do you remember there used to be caricatures of her in the 70s, didn't there? Um... Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Lisa Robson. Lisa Robson hated math, still do. I don't understand it and was made to feel silly that I didn't get it. Oh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. We're going to talk about that. We just want to catch up with you. How are you all feeling? And, and Nadia, you've lost a, an inch and a half. We've got proof on the wall over there. Yeah, so if it's true, I've got to go and have a bloody bone scan. I'm really depressed if I've lost an inch and a half. That, that's, I mean, that's so serious. I, I'm not even 60 yet. I can't have lost almost two inches in height. Well, an inch and a half. It's just not up. All right, people are really wanting to talk about maths. It's flying up. So let's talk about okay, maths. Okay, hang on a minute. Let's see. Not, let's not talk about my height. Let's maths. see who's the fastest. Seven times six. 42. Yeah, well done. Eight times nine. 72. Yeah, very good. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 11 times 20. Uh, 120. 220. Oh, <laughs> there we go. I'm going to force up. 220. 11 oh, yeah, times course, 20. Course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just added to zero. Good ship lollipop, 301. Um, Nanny Dye used to be five foot two. She's now four foot nine. Um, okay, let's look at this poll. Do you agree with making maths compulsory until 18? 71% said no, 29% said yes. And just to give you the context of this, uh, Rishi Sunak, the man who's vanished ever since he was elected, the man I have almost trusted even less can you believe it, than Boris Johnson? Because he is a nightmare in plain sight, whereas I find Rishi... It's a nightmare in the shadow. ...is a tricky thingy on a dishy. Uh, his plan is to play... He's going to pledge to reimagine our approach to numeracy as part of a, his first speech of 2023 by, guess what, guys? As if school for many people wasn't horrific enough. By making maths compulsory up until the age of 18. They've stepped back from saying A-level maths will be compulsory. Because, well, because that would clearly be absolutely ridiculous. Imagine well, saying to somebody that can't hold a pencil, you've got to do A-level art. Some people just don't have the talent for it. For me, I don't know about anyone else, for me, this is verging on Kim Jong-un North Korea style policy wow. making. Okay. I have never... I had, what happened to me last night when I saw the story? I went completely mad. If, unfortunately, I had a headache and I was so exhausted and I couldn't meet his, his, his this passion. This baby's so cross. Now, before I get going on this, of course numeracy is key. Of course everyone needs numeracy. And of course maths is an incredibly stimulating subject for huge numbers of people. And what would have been exciting if he'd said, it's cry, cracking shame that key, people are leaving school without basic numeracy or understanding how to get a mortgage mm. or to how to... How the markets work. Or manage the finance so if he'd said well. we're going to we're going to get because the schools have been asking for extra maths teachers for years. There is they're woefully short of maths teachers. So he's not going to pull this off anyway. And if he'd said let's really look at like our primary school teaching and on so that people don't lose their confidence in the way they do with maths. I mean I think if you're great at maths then that's fine and it's all brilliant. But if you really struggle with maths, <coughs> like well, I did, like, I like most time, of my yeah. family. Like our kids, um, maths becomes this sword hanging over your head the whole way through school. Terror and fear. Every maths lesson, I was terrified, terrified. And I remember my mum as a kid saying to me, Nadia, the reason maths teachers are so scary is 
because they're really good at maths, they cannot understand why you don't understand it. Now, Kiki has the most amazing maths teacher. We adore him. And she's really making leaps and bounds because she's got a brilliant maths teacher. If there were going to be funds put in to really improving our maths teaching and maybe having really excellent classes for people that don't have a talent for maths, then I would have been really rejoicing. I would have said that would be really good because there is a problem. There are people leaving school innumerate. There are. But this, when it's already... So the 16-year-olds that already are, can't do bloody maths and are like in tears about maths, they're going to do it for another two years for what? Struggle through, waste the maths teacher's time because they're not going to be able to keep moving on up, are they? Because they haven't really got what's gone behind. <laughs> Either failed a GCSE or scraped through a GCSE. It's bonkers. That's pretty much everything I said last night. Oh, was it? I wasn't really listening. I'm sorry. No, I was doing um, it more from a personal level. No, no, no. I mean, my, my, my feeling about the whole thing is, is that, you know, people, you know, a few people are saying maths is important. Of course maths is important. My, right. my response well, to, to this wasn't that, isn't that maths isn't important, but I do have an issue about how the prioritising here of certain subjects happens in this country. And um, a couple of you have been saying, Minky Moo, this is a way... This is, this is dealing with a problem right at the end of the problem, trying to band-aid a problem, rather than structurally and fundamentally solving it, further down the food chain in education, so that we don't get to this point where there are countless people who don't have basic numeracy. Basic numeracy is critically important, but isn't it interesting, and this is the bit where I'm going to get fucking enraged, isn't it interesting that literacy isn't seen in the same way? He hasn't even mentioned literacy. English, because yeah. literacy, let We've me explain to you. Literacy, literacy of all forms allows for thought, analysis, and communication questioning. And communication. Numbers don't. I mean, you could argue philosophically that they do in some way, but they don't. Numbers keep you ensnared within a system that wants you ensnared, whereas language and literacy encourages you to use this. In any way, whether it be left-wing thinking, right-wing thinking, whatever, constructive, analytical, or questioning thinking. thinking. Mm. And so when I saw him announce this, I would have been far less furious if, if he'd, he'd said literacy English. and numeracy. Yeah. That would have been a yeah, rational, reasonable thing. And yeah. it yet again proves, as Maddie reminded me last night, that the government wants to erode all the cre creative humanities degrees because the system doesn't want to employ these people, not because they are, you get degrees that makes you unemployable. The system is steered <clears> towards money. passive finance, economics, but not even economics that work for the people who are learning. Economics that work for other people. So it's a complete fraudulent nonsense. And so when he says... Preach, baby. Further down in his speech, this is because we live in a world of data and systems and all that. Yeah, fine, but guess what, fucking Spock? There are countless thousands. We have one in our family, Paddy, stu students who want to take maths beyond 18. Yeah. Let them. Yeah. I don't understand. You're gonna, you are going to decimate the mental health of students if they think that upon leaving school, because the systems failed them to get their basic numeracy, they then have to make it, make it up because the government's fucked it and the system's fucked it by continuing it to 18 you're going to have a mental health crisis. That's what my daughter just said. An absolute she mental health crisis. She just said that. She said, Mum, this is really, really going to be bad for a lot of kids really who are struggling. Bad. Who are like, you know, reaching for the line. Now, as we say, she has a fantastic maths teacher. Um, but, you know, I was reading s some reactions from heads and, and teachers saying... It's just an absolute joke what he's just come out and said. Yeah, Gabrielle, these, not, pe these politicians don't understand how normal people are. Yeah, they don't. Students who hear this today will have a massive body blow to their confidence, their Not those that love futures. maths and are good no, at maths no, 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 and see no. a future in business. So or in, exactly. But, but for the artists of the world and the creatives and the, the people that may be utterly brilliant in English, but can just scrape through with maths, this would be devastating. Because don't forget, at that time, as a child, that's your whole world, isn't yeah. it, what you're being made to do at school? Um, and, and I totally disagree with all this conspiracy theory about lizards and Bill Gates and the system and all that. But I tell you what I don't, I do agree with, and someone read a, a sort of, there was something on TikTok yesterday which was talking about, the, this, guy, this is the end of the you Conservative Party. No, this, is the, you didn't, this ah. is the end of the Conservative Party. They are losing the young vote hand over fist. 
This but is, they don't care about the No, they don't at all. This they is a policy. They only appeal to old people with it, money and with exactly. savings. Exactly. This is a policy to the Cotswolds chattering flu, few and the, and the Red Wall, all those people who voted for the Tories. This is to say to them, we are getting a control and making ourselves civilised. But they're only making us civilised in a very rarefied, conservative sense of civilised. They are allowing the arts literacy i mean all he needed to do was say literacy was as equivalently important as numeracy and, and why and why are so many children getting to gcse limping through failing and then having to redo it when they've moved on to their next college that, that, those are the discussions we want to be having it's not saying well, let's just just add on another couple of years look at why we've got a mess i'm sure many of you here parents are, are like us that have had children that have really struggled with maths and uh, oh, myself, I did. Mark, Mark was all right with maths. But um, <clears throat> he'll be just uh, just banging their head against a brick wall today. Just like, especially when you've been saying, just get to that it's PC. Hard just get to just it's hard just, enough just to get, get through. through a maths lesson. It, okay, I, it, you know, when and... so much that is wrong yeah, with yeah, yeah, our exactly. education system, poor teachers working under such pressure. Yeah. Head teacher. Now teachers are so much of their day is taken up with dealing with the mental health issues of young mm -hmm. people. Can you imagine? They just must be going. Every new person that comes is going. I know what we need to do to fix schools. And they must be just one It's such a blunt, God unimaginative sake. approach. It's just so blunt. It's so unimaginative. I don't think it will get through, Mark. Going back. To, let's go back to Ken I mean, Robinson, the guy who gave. But go and check out Ken Ken Robinson's TED talks. He was kind of like he. he he's not necessarily promoting homeschooling or anything like that. He promotes a more. He's sort an of, academic himself. He's an academic. He's knighted. He was sir. He's, he's passed away sadly. Um, and he was an education specialist, and his idea was that yes, numeracy is important, doesn't say it's not, but so is literacy, but even third alongside that is creativity. And I was reminded last night when I read, when I saw this, and I was making something over there and I was fucking spitting feathers. Um, I was remember, I was thinking, I want to remind yet again the conservatives and anyone who thinks that the arts are namby pamby, or not even arts, humanities, history, so, so, uh, sociology, all that kind of stuff. If those subjects weren't studied, the last two years in lockdown would have been a pretty miserable affair without actors, creators, musicians, directors, designers. But who would we be as humans? And exactly. Would we just be I mean, machines? that's the other line. Would we just oh. be machines? It's just, it's... I mean, all those, all those subjects are are what make us human, I think. But, but the really worrying <laughs> thing is, is that the, the, the Labour Party just seemed to be sort of like on the Tory coattails, he's, he's just, just saying less immigrants, um, you know, he's just, he's just uh, staying Brexit. I mean, there was another article the other day saying that Brexit has, by, by about four or five different think tanks with no agenda, Brexit is costing us something like 50 billion a year. Oh, funny that, that's exactly the amount they tried to save in the budget. 50 billion a year. But neither the Labour Party nor the Conservative Party nor anyone who voted for it are actually acknowledging this fact. James O'Brien does it every day on LBC. <laughs> it's just, oh, anyway. No, Thank God for James O'Brien. 30% of you say yes, you agree with making maths compulsory. 70% of you say no. And just to be clear, this is not about, I totally agree that something needs to be done about numeracy, as does something need to be done with literacy. But I think it needs to happen much further down the system so that you don't end up with a system where kids come out unable to do it. The problem lies earlier. It doesn't lie with forcing everyone, potentially, to keep studying maths at a point, with all due respect, teenagers, with, at a point when youngsters are at their most mentally fragile, confusing state. I mean, I've always said that t you give humans the worst amount of choices at the worst, the best amount of choices at the worst time of their lives. The worst thing you can do to a child going through all the shit that a teenager goes through is saying, right, you've got to make this decision, that decision, yeah. this decision. You're locked into this, this for the rest this. of your life. Yeah. yeah. There ended my rant. It's a good one. <clears throat> it makes me so... It, it's not even about the fact that I disagree with the concept. It's the way it's imparted. It's the way it's delivered. And it's the way there is never an equivalence between numerical money and essentially scientific and monetary objective stuff versus creative, thought-provoking, mindful, wellness, expressive, challenging thought. There's no interest from this lot on that because you know why? People would start to know. think that they're yeah. not right. Yeah. And then I do begin to think there's a fucking conspiracy theory. It drives me nuts. 
Anyway, sorry about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it just drives me nuts. Um, this, this story, Nadia, you shared with me, I thought was really shocking. Now, before we talk about it, I just want to say this is incredibly rare that this yeah. happens. And this... this is so rare. I mean, it was. It, they said it in the court yeah. that this sort of behaviour is so, so rare. And the reason that we really want to, you know, put, put that forward before we start talking yeah, no. about this is, of course, the knock-on effect from whenever there is a false rape allegation mm. and... Um, yeah, and this, this is obviously a person that has a huge. Was it was it racially incited? I mean, because this uh, to give you the, the context, Eleanor Williams, twenty two, has been found guilty of lying over Asian grooming gang claims. Um, she falsely accused that she'd been sold into sexual slavery, but she's been found guilty on I think about seven counts in Preston of essentially uh, perjury and, and lying in court. And, but then she said that she was she was kidnapped, didn't she? Yeah, and that, yeah. but, but they found footage of her. She checked into a hotel. And did she? How did she damage her face? Well, she said that she'd been attacked with a knife. I mean, the injuries are horrific. Her face, the That's pictures the of her face. That's the shocking thing. But actually, they were able to prove that she these were injuries had been done to herself, I suppose, by the way that they learned mm. herself, and it had been done with a hammer. Yeah. So this is such a sad, sad, sad story. So, yes, yeah, seven cases, seven counts of making false allegations. Senior Crown Prosecutor in the case said that Williams had maliciously and persistently made false accusations against several men who had the misfortune of being acquainted with her. Oh. I think some of them were put, actually, was one of them put into... Yeah, he was prison, in prison yeah. for two months. Um, <clears throat> so... Apparently she based it upon, uh, alongside the plot of the Liam Neeson film, Taken. Yeah. Um, so clearly something delusional going on there. And but So first and foremost, this is somebody that is either evil or has a serious mental health condition. Oh, Claude Regan says, and now she's got Munchausen's by proxy. Yeah, you, 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 yeah. I mean, nobody in sane mind, as far as I'm concerned, would do something like this. <coughs> but to be able to... The injuries that she's done to herself. And that's what I thought, Claude. I thought, I wonder if it's Munchausen's by proxy. No, it wouldn't be by proxy. It would just be Munchausen's, which is, you know, such a complex uh, mental health condition, isn't it? It fascinates me, actually. It mm. absolutely fascinates me. Mm. Um, where somebody, like, it's such an extreme need from, for sympathy that they will... <clears throat> make themselves ill. They do, they do incredible, incredible things. And then, of course, Munchausen's by proxy is the most awful. I think even worse is when you make somebody else ill, like your child, inject mm. them with all sorts of things, take them to mm. multiple different doctors, p drug them, all this sort of stuff. So it's a mental health mm. situation. But what always is so worrying, when, though these are very rare, when these cases come up, is how that impacts rape victims and their own worry of going to you know, to report, and also juries thinking, oh, well, you know, is this just all made up? Yeah, that's what Sil Carney says, very sad yeah. for everyone involved. It's going to affect real victims for a long time who already yeah. struggle to get their voice heard. I mean, I think that that is the kind of negative trickle-down from this, isn't it? Is that it will just... I mean, although, as the Crown Prosecution Service says, this is incredibly rare. But that said, I mean, we know of someone who knows someone who knows someone who... Um, falsely accused another teenage boy of, of rape and sexual assault, and it became clear they, they dropped the charges. You know, I think there is potentially at times a, a sort of thought, you know, amongst those who aren't really thinking about the consequences sometimes of it's, it's quite a huge thing to accuse someone of without any kind of evidence whatsoever. And yet at the same time, as we've talked well, so anything, often on murder, this channel... Murder? Yeah, yeah. Um, any any <clears throat> kind of crime. I mean, it's just... Yeah, but just you need a body with murder, horrific. don't you? Horrific. Yeah. Or, or theft or anything. To mm. be accused of something you haven't done must be just... Oh, I mm. can't even imagine. Mm. To be serving time, to be in prison. Yeah, Aaron no, Bullimore, the kind... I don't know how many people there are in prison that didn't do yeah. what they've been accused of. Yeah, Aaron Bullimore, this kind of thing has happened to a friend of mine's boyfriend at the moment. She's made false allegations and it's going to court with the only evidence being this girl's friend said it happened. Um, well, you know, it's highly unlikely he will... I mean, the sad thing is, is that even when there is, you know, even when there is overwhelming evidence... People still don't get prosecuted. So really, mm. if there's very vague evidence, it's unlikely that he will get mm. he will get um, charged. As... 
sort of, you sort of <laughs> um, this other story I wanted to talk about was something that we were going to talk about on the coffee moaning. I, I just it kind of snagged my interest because it just made me think about hmm, you know. Oh the, God, I remember seeing that. Yeah, film. Romeo, Franco Zeffirelli. Franco yeah. Zeffirelli's film Romeo and Juliet, which was made in 1968. The two actors in it who Beautiful. were under 16 had been assured and promised by Franco Zeffirelli, the director himself that their naked body parts wouldn't be used, they would have flesh-coloured or skin-coloured tights and stuff like that. It would be... Then he encouraged them to actually go nude, and then when oh, they shot the scene, God. he said that they would make sure they didn't use shots that revealed oh, nudity and what no. have you. Uh, and they, 50 years later, or thereabouts, what are we, uh, f yeah, 50, 54 years later, the two stars are suing, I think it's Paramount Pictures, uh, for half a billion dollars over the nude scene. Uh, the actors are Olivia Hussey, who was then 15, and yeah, Leonard Olivia Whiting, Hussey. who were then, was then 16. They're alleging sexual abuse, sexual harassment and fraud. Um, oh, God. I wonder how much that film has grossed over the years. Probably not uh, anywhere Nothing near like that, what no. they're suing it for. But I just wanted to know what you thought about that. Do you think... I mean, a lot of people often ask this question, and people very close to us who I know have asked this question, and I'm surprised that they do. Do you think that there's any difference? You know, they've had f there's been 50 years since this was made. Makes no difference. Exactly. Explain why. Because there are lots of people who would say, well, why now? Why, why after 50 years? Why, why when you're 71? Why would you... I mean, you know, a lot of people think like that. Obviously, I understand why. But, I mean... Because I think, I think if, you, if you have been... I mean, that will have carried through their, with them their whole lives, mm. won't it? Mm. I mean... I've had little things done like, just little tiny things done like that in, 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 in scenes, a scene that I did that I was really uncomfortable with. And it's always there and it's nothing compared to that. No, nothing. No. And 16. And that was a sex scene. And that is, so if you imagine what that must have felt like to them, that basically yeah. porno pornographic um, content was shared with them in cinemas across the world, mm. it's really not that different mm. from somebody who has a photo, photos taken on something shared. It, you know, I've spoken to people that have had um, pornographic images of them. Do you remember when I used to do the Kilroy show? Mm. We did a whole mm -hmm. episode on this. And, and, you know, this was... And, and, and just the pain that goes on and on forever. I mean, whatever kind of sexual assault you've you've endured it stays with you your whole life so and i think this is also about i think it's, it's about making the point we have to keep making the point people get sick of me too people get sick of all mm. or of people making these complaints i, I don't because mm. i think yeah we've got to we've it's uncomfortable yeah but we've got to have change the only way we're going to have change is by things being uncomfortable but for also, a long old while yet but also i do think there has to be some acknowledgement of the fact that um you know uh, values and you know norms were very different back then and so in a sense over the evolution of time it's almost like societally do we we all do it we all did it with jimmy savile you kind of reflect and look back and go hang on a minute we yeah. were all kind and of and it makes you into think a... about everything that yeah. you've thought and it's education yeah, yeah but i think for the individuals involved it's pain yeah. it's abusive Oh. 16, they've been told, they would have, because what they used to do in those days, and probably still now on many sets, it's probably still going on, it's this feeling that you're stupid if you don't do it. Mm. You're not professional, you're not an artist, you're not going to be employed again. It's going to get round that you wouldn't do this, that mm. this d director is a great artist, he's a creative. This isn't about sex, what are you saying here? This is about us all being artists. Now imagine... I've dealt with that in teeny, honestly, I really do mean teeny ways as an adult. What would that be like as a child? Because mm. I think 16 is a child. If my 16-year-old daughter had gone through that experience and 20 years later, I, I would carry that my whole life, the mm. rage and upset and hurt about that. But there's, there's another, I mean, I agree. And, but know, I think the it's boys, the amount, the, the billion, half yeah, a billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like, the boy, well, I don't think they'll get where, that amount. That's where people get aerated with yeah, it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I mean, his buttocks were shown, her breasts were shown briefly within the film. But also, you're right, it was the film, and it is the film, that is often shown to students and kids in school, and I think everyone gets sniggery and, and giggly around that point. But, but it their butts it, and their boobs that were shown means that their butts and their boobs were naked yes. together. They yeah, were yeah. two children, children put yeah. naked together in yeah. front of probably... 
25 people crew Shell, watching. Shell, someone's asking where were the parents. Again, this is that's where I get to, this was a different time and there will have been a sense and a feeling. You've got to understand the power that is behind a huge director huge like he was. Huge director, never, yeah. rate, never rated him myself. Artist, Franco artist. Zeffirelli, yeah, artist with his cat. And, and then you've got an entire crew and then you've got an entire studio. And also you're, as ki kids and the family of, you're probably thinking this is a huge opportunity. And the erosion of boundaries will have happened gradually as it did. You know, they, they go through the many different levels of him saying this won't happen, that won't happen, this won't happen. It might, you know, that, that's not to suggest that necessarily Franco Zeffirelli was, he might have, it might have been his creative vision, but it was entirely inappropriate. Um, and wrong. So in terms of where were the parents, show some, I think, again, it was just a different time. Even if the parents were in the they room, they would have been coerced into it as well. The kids probably it. said, all oh, right, I've got to do this. This is my, I mean, yeah. But it, it puts it me in mind messy. of two of It was other, a messy time. Does anyone else remember? There was a similar case brought against Led Zeppelin. Do you remember with the boy on the, do you remember that, is it Led Zeppelin, that very famous front cover where there's almost oh, like a pyramid? With a naked with, with a boy. naked toddler. Yes. I think that, person try uh, try to see i can't remember if they were successful but also the guy who was the baby on the front of the nirvana album he too tried to sue i think he, he was unsuccessful to be fair in that sort of a situation there's nirvana baby we and a led didn't, we didn't well. think about but naked babies as mm. being some as it but you I, I wouldn't i mean i get that shell no i know yeah it's not quite the same thing but for that boy to always have this naked photo you can imagine why that would be yeah, hurtful yeah, yeah, but yeah, i yeah. think it's not the same thing that they chose to put a naked baby on an album cover do you no i mean it, I, I i very I much felt that both times, of them were just hippie well yeah. let's in Nirvana, those but times the you wouldn't have thought and now you would be very aware oh that that God. could yeah. yeah but but again you know we're looking back to mm. times when we thought very differently because well we the nirvana the album for me that. was very much there was a time where it was just it seemed really quite all right to watch yeah. amazing shots of babies thrown into pools because we're all a god oh, that they could oh, that they could breathe. Well, no, I mean not literally in a sort of, but there was a, equivalent to a meme where people go, "Oh, have you seen that when you throw a baby into a into a they pool swim. they swim?" Yeah. Um, so there's all of that. Um, so that I thought that was interesting. Um, should we? Do we want to find out some of the other things to avoid in 2023? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. Oh, well, no, because you've said we'd sleep better. Should we do sleep? I mean, the other... How to, how to sleep better? Who gets enough sleep? Yeah. Who, who feels they get enough sleep? I have to say, again... Oh, you know, I was talking about Tim Spector yesterday, where he DM'd me on Instagram, and we're going to do a live on Monday. He's crawled into a DM, so I'm really worried. <laughs> so um, I was really excited, because I think... I mean, he's, he is the brain of Britain on all of this, but um, we're going to put up something on here where you can ask any questions that you want and I will ask him about the gut. But of course, the gut is also very important mm. and looking after it is very important for good sleep. I'm so excited about Mark improving his gut because you're going to feel so much. Do you know the other thing that's going to go down? Uh, that will never go down. <laughs> that, that rarely does go no, down. No, the other thing that's going to improve. Is it going to go up? <laughs> <laughs> it's your bags under your eyes. Oh, wow, fantastic. Because you've been asking me what you can do about your bags yeah, under your eyes. Yeah, but the last time I asked you, you lay on the side, I don't know. I don't, I didn't you did, know. You did know, you went, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird. I said, oh, I thought I'm engaging with her. I want to know what the supplements are. I said, are there supplements? No, no supplements. And you literally, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it's because you bloody annoy me. You're asking about your bloody health and then you don't do anything that Come I on, say. I'm lost 48 hours. I'm literally. But you haven't listened to that podcast yet. I know I haven't. I haven't had time. Uh, okay, here's some tips. Uh, back, one of the worst things to do is sleep with someone who snores. But also to snore yourself. I think the snorer gets underrepresented. Listen, listen. I know I snore, but you Kiki don't not said, to that way you are. To, to Kiki said to me, Daddy has to admit that he snores. I do. You do snore. I do snore. But I never, when you've kept me awake snoring, I never say it because I feel bad about it. No, you say it in the night. You go, Mom, stop it. Why didn't you tell me to stop snoring last night? Because you, I do, and then you don't stop, and then I do, and then you don't stop. So it's easier just to go. It is a problem. That's why people end up not sleeping together anymore. <sighs> yeah. Um, here's some top tips from, who is it from? From uh, Russell Foster, Professor of Circadian Neuroscience. That's a great title. Well, straight away. Professor of Circadian, circadian. Neuroscience. So you, you're not going to go with your circadian rhythm and then your whole sleep I pattern I go goes with way. any rhythm that's on offer. <laughs> Okay, well, we're supposed to go to sleep as the sun goes down and wake up as the sun rises up. Nobody does that, do they? Because we're all watching Netflix at 11 o'clock at night. Well, he says we should get 30 minutes of outdoor light before 10 in the morning to set you right. That's why that first walk in the morning, 
And this is what Michael Mosley's always going on about. I told you this, and I told you guys this. It's about getting up and going for a walk first thing in the morning. Yeah, I mean, he does say as well, it's called, a, I love this, a, robu a robust blast of early morning light. I think that robust burst. I love this that you're coming to us with health things. I know. This is brilliant. What Maybe if you happening? start imparting the knowledge, yeah, yeah, let's absolutely. give Mark's health corner, and then because you've read it, you might actually do it. Uh, they say if you can't step out during the winter, for example, uh, use a light box or something. That's what your dad My had, dad has it? one of those. I'm going to get us one. Something else here that Nadia's always saying, a nap is better than a lion. Yeah. If we do but sleep badly, surely a weekend lion makes sense. Uh, we might feel better that day, but alas, a lion is disruptive to the body clock. If you need to catch up on sleep at the weekend, a nap is the best option. Yeah, you're supposed to set your minutes. alarm every single day for the same time. Mm. We are really dreading, because we've been having some lions and going, oh God, it's us catching up on all this sleep, but we're getting tired. We're not actually getting... Yeah. So we're dreading like next week back at school. So like from tomorrow, yeah. we've, I think we've got the gym really early just yeah. to try and get us to get back into that. Um, the What's the what optimum amount of sleep you need? Well, there's a debate it's here. Everyone, everyone says it must be this, but it's not. It's anywhere between six and ten hours, different for different people. I could have done this as a quiz. I would have been able to answer yeah, yeah. this. Uh, they say keep your hands and feet warm to help you not off. Now, this doesn't work for me because if my feet are kept warm, I get yeah. over hot feet and then I yeah. can't sleep. Well, if mine are too cold, I just use your thigh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. All right, I don't continue with it. Sorry, it was just Move settling on. in. Move on. Make your bedroom a sleep haven by considering separate duvets. But the only way that would work for me is if I had two double duvets, because yeah. a single duvet doesn't work. Right. Do we want your own duvet? <sighs> I didn't know how to put Do it I in take your to duvet? you. Huh? Do I take your duvet? Nadia does this really odd thing where she's always told me that I sleep on the edge of the bed, but what you do is you sleep in a sort of potential spooning position, but it's such an acute angle yeah. that your head is virtually I on your table. Feature. And you say, why won't you spoon with me? Because I literally have to go <laughs> like I'm more a, like a, I'm a more, tick. I'm like a triangle. I have to go like an acute, an isosceles triangle, talking of maths. <laughs> and, I have to, and so when I'm hugging her, my, when I've got my arms around your neck, I'm like this. <laughs> It's, it's true, so I go hard. like a triangle. I don't go, in, I don't go into a semicircle, do I? Uh, and, and finally, stop obsessing about getting a block of sleep. Oh, tell me about this. Uh, eight hours of uninterrupted sleep is the dream. In fact, it's normal to wake up several times a night. If anyone has a, a Fitbit, it'll show you that I was up padding around for, you know, total, collectively, about an hour last night. But that doesn't matter, does it? It depends, it, it, what matters is, really? is, is... Is that what they're saying? Yeah, the natural sleep pattern of humans is almost certainly biphasic or polyphasic, which means you go to sleep, you wake up, you go to sleep oh. again, you wake up. It's not a single consolidated block. Well, I suppose if you go back to, to when to we would have just been humans out in the, out in, living out in the wild, you would have had to wake up multiple times. Yeah. Because of noises and animals. You'd have been and thinking of bears coming to eat you yeah. and stuff. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, but, but the other thing is... To go back to Tim Spector. Tim Spector's become my new John Campbell. Oh. Mark said, oh my God, I've got another bloody well, and also scientist. You're now, you're, now, you're now doing DMs with him. It's not <laughs> fucking hell. But anyway, he says that, um, which is what we've said over the last couple of years as well, that fasting, not, he doesn't call it fasting. He calls it restricted time eating. Um, because when you say fasting, people think you're not eating, but you are. You eat every day, but within a 10-hour, 8-hour, whatever period. Yeah. So we're doing 10 hours at the moment because we're following what Tim Spector says. Um, but, 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 when you, but, but the, the, the best thing is to try and to have stopped eating really 7 o'clock. That's hard for you, so we're mm. saying 8 o'clock for you. But because so that, that really fucks up your sleep. If you've mm. eaten, if you suddenly have another glass of wine just before you go to bed, or you have even just a cube mm. of chocolate, even an apple, it just, it, it, will, keep, it will keep you wakeful. So. Uh, we, we need to wrap up soon, but I want to read some of your comments on this because it's a big one for all of you. Um, sleep. Erin Bullimore, with, a, sleep with ADHD, we typically sleep later and stay up later, and we usually need more sleep closer to the 10 hours. Mm. Uh, Louise Pudney, Pudney, I need lots of sleep because I have a neurolo neurological condition and I have to have an afternoon sleep. Wow. You know, um, with the afternoon sleep, and this is Michael Mosley that says this, you set a timer so because you don't want to sleep Sophia more says, than... I hope Tim Spector hasn't heard how annoying I find him. <laughs> That's what I first thing I, I said I love it. It's because he's so... It's, cause, it's because he had a lot don't of bad news around the pandemic. Stop defending your boyfriend. Stop defending your boyfriend. He had a lot boyfriend. of bad news around the pandemic. But... Um, 
yeah, you know, to, to set an alarm because I think what happens is people go over the time, and the thing is, just set the set the alarm for twenty minutes, half an hour. And if it's in the morning, if you have a coffee, and then have your sleep when you wake up. That coffee is then kicking in, so it's really... Kimberly Jones, interesting really point. Good. Hundreds of years ago, we apparently had two sleeps and woke in the night to eat and do jobs, then back to bed. Mm. Reese Roberts, my granddad at 94, gets up at 5am, walks for an hour every morning without the assistance of any medication, oh. and does it because he enjoys it. Wow, that's so cool. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, you know um, uh, Michael, Mo Dr Michael Mosley does all these 10-minute um, little videos, not videos, podcasts, for BBC Sounds, check them out. And it's all if I could just change one thing. So each 10 minutes is change one thing. And mm. he's gone through dozens and dozens, trying sleeps, trying, I don't mm. know, flaxseed, what's it doing in your body, eating just berries, yeah. no, absolutely everything. And, and of course, they all have fabulous results. But he said the one thing he would never give up for health, physical and mental health, the one, if you had to choose one thing out of all of that, it would be that first morning walk. Yeah, there you go. So um, for mental health and for physical. A number of you commented on the fact that you have fibromyalgia, and of course that 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 really God. plays havoc with sleep too. What do what so. do what do what do some of you? Anybody found anything that works? We know somebody that has fibromyalgia. Mm. Nikki Burton says fibromyalgia well. wrecks my sleep. Hasn't haven't slept properly in over twenty years. And it's the fatigue that fatigue. comes with yeah, it, isn't yeah, it? I'm yeah. just learning so much about it. It's yeah. I really. Oh. It's, it's a nasty one, isn't it? Mm. Um, I don't know if any of you saw <clears throat> Jonathan Ross talking about his daughter yeah, I did. that has it. Yeah. Um, and it's she's been using something called, is it the pinking? Is Natasha there or Christos? The pinking therapy. Um, also, we somebody that we know that has it has just had myofacial massage and that helped a lot. And then somebody else that we know found that CBD oil rubbed just yeah, the as they technique, were... Natasha, yeah. Pet, yeah, thank you. Uh, just as they're starting to feel a flare-up in hands, they've been using it and it's been working really well. So anyone comes up with anything, please share it. I know there's a number of people on here with fibromyalgia. Yeah. Kimberly um, Jones says magnesium before bed and CBD oil. Now, that, yes, somebody that I really trust, one of our healthy health people, says magnesium every night and on the skin really aids sleep because the big problem with fibromyalgia but you're not is giving sleep. you're not giving medical advice here are you this is I'm something not that you heard sharing yeah, yeah, sharing sharing i will never give any medical yeah. advice because i'm a two-bit said celebrity uh, yes no credentials on anything yes there will be part two of the preparations for dina's 60th party so that will be landing um what was the other final oh the final thing i wanted to say as well is oh and also jeremy renner has posted a post go to go and check it out on popcorn junkies from his bed i mean he suffered some pretty horrendous injuries but um oh, but he seems to be making a recovery um I'm only saying this because I know he's posted this on his Instagram, but if we could all give a shout out to Lee, he's 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 really struggling at the moment. He's going through some really bad luck at the beginning Lee of the Durant. year. Lee Durant. And it revolves around a, a sort of, well, he's come, without mincing your words, there's some form of heart disease that he's struggling with. Uh, heart failure, potentially. Now, heart failure can be just part of the heart. It doesn't mean the whole heart fails. But um, So he's really going through it at the moment. So just wanted to send that. I know lots of you guys here know Lee. Uh, Go over to his Instagram, give him yeah, a bit Yeah, give, give him a bit of love because, uh, and if you watch this, Lee, we're all thinking of you, matey, Flynn. And, you know, it's, it's like with anything. You know, when I talk about supplements or any of these things, you must check it out for yourself. Mm. I am not here to give any kind of mm. advice. Somebody just saying there that they feel like magnesium gives them... Um, migraine so go into your health shop and have a chat with the people oh, there joe mckenna says have a chat with tim about it tim doesn't agree with taking vitamins and also he says doesn't. taking calcium combined with magnesium is yeah. dangerous i just listened to that on his podcast he mm. um calcium he thinks if people have too much can cause firing in the arteries wow well there we go but you can put magnesium on your skin so you don't have to take it all the way Okay, guys. That's well, look, have a lovely day. And as I say, yeah, part two of uh, the women preparing for the 60th birthday party is about to land. Bye.